Welcome everyone. We're going to be talking about resonance uh, in this lesson. And a resonance structure would be one of two or more Lewis structures representing a single molecule that basically cannot be described fully with the use of only one Lewis structure. So whenever you can draw two or more Lewis dot structures to represent a single molecule, it's because it has resonance. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at an example using ozone, which is O3. And we're going to go ahead and show you that this example has resonance. If you look at um, the Lewis dot structure for ozone, which we'll go ahead and, and draw it up, you're going to see that uh, one side will have a single bond and the other side will have a double bond. Now, here's the thing. Um, a single bond is actually measured to be longer in terms of bond length than a double bond. A double bond is a little bit shorter in length and a triple bond would actually be even shorter. And one of the things that we're going to look at is that, that experimental evidence indicates that both oxygen-oxygen bonds in ozone are identical. It, if, if it was true that one side has a single and the other side has a double, we would expect one side of the ozone to be a little longer than the other, but that is not the case. So let's take a look at what ozone looks like. So we have O3. Oxygen has six valence. There's three of them. So our magic number is, or our total valence is 18. So we're going to draw three oxygens. Going to connect them over here like this. We're going to give everybody an octet. So we're going to add six dots here, six here. And then the middle one will have four dots there. And you'll notice that when we count, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. The line is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yet we need to have eighteen. So we're going to have to remove two electrons. Now, Here's the example of resonance. Let's say we remove one from here and one from here. Then what happens is I'll erase the two that we're removing. The two that are left will bond and you will form a double bond. I'll draw it up here between the two oxygens on the left side. And we'll put this like this. Okay. But let me reset here down here and go back to the original. We, can have e we could have easily taken one away from here and the other oxygen on the other side. And again, erasing those two. We're trying to go from 20 to 18 here by removing two. Uh, this would have bonded here. And you would have had a double bond on the right side of the molecule. So I'll go ahead and fill this in. This one would have been a single bond. Now, the symbol for resonance, you'll notice it's going to be a double arrow. So I'm going to just put a double arrow here. And if you look at the structures as drawn, there's two multiple structures, two Lewis dot structures that represent ozone. The first one has the double bond on the left, the single bond on the right. And the second one is the reverse, the double bonds on the right side. If either one of these were correct, that means that experimentally, the side with the double bond should be shorter than the side with the single bond. However, data or experiments have, that have been performed have shown that um, the two oxygen bonds are identical. So notice that you would have expected one side to be longer, the single uh, single bonded side, compared to the double bonded side, which should have been shorter. But that's not what we see. So what is happening? Why is it that both sides are equal? Well, here is the concept. What happens is that the second pair of bonds, that the ones that form the double bond, they don't really belong to the either side. They don't belong to the two oxygens on the left, nor the two oxygens on the right. Those, are elect those electrons are considered what we call delocalized electrons. Delocalized means that they are spread 
between more than two atoms. In fact, I will show you in just a moment that delocalized electrons are electrons that can move uh, back and forth. They don't belong to one side nor the other. So in our drawing here, what's happening is that this second set is going there and then this one's going back. It's going back and forth. Um, so that second set of electrons, known as delocalized electrons, again, it doesn't belong to neither side. It belongs to both sides. So those electrons are moving back and forth. So what ends up happening is that ozone has what we call a one and a half bond character. That means that the second um, bond here spends half the time on the left side and half the time on the right side. It's just moving back and forth. So when we represent ozone, we must draw both Lewis dot structures and use a double arrow between each and both structures represent uh, ozone, not one nor the other. You need to show both when you're representing ozone. So resonance is the use of two or more Lewis dot structures to represent that one molecule. The real ozone molecule, okay, uh, it doesn't oscillate between the two resonance structure. It's a unique, stable structure. And since it cannot be adequately represented with one Lewis dot structure, you must show both. Now, when you draw this more accurately, uh, ozone will look something like this. You'll learn when you cover VSEPR that ozone can either be like that. It has a bent structure. Here's the symbol for resonance. So the double bond can either be on the right side, like in the first drawing, or it can be on the left side here. And these are the two structures that represent uh, ozone. Again, you have this double bond delocalized, moving back and forth. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first one is the nitrate ion. So we got nitrogen, which has five valents. Oxygen has six. <clears throat> nitrogen has, uh, since there's one nitrogen, it has five two oxygens at 12. When you multiply, that's 17. But because of the charge, we must add one electron, okay? So our magic number is going to be 18. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put nitrogen here. We're going to put the two O's, connect them, give everybody an octet like we normally do. Actually, let me do the peripheral atoms first. Then I'll go ahead and put the nitrogen. When you count the lines and the dots, you're going to see that you have 20. We are going to have to remove two electrons and bring it down to 18. And again, you can see where the resonance is going to come in because we can remove um, one from here, one from here. And when I do that, our double bond will be between these two. So our first structure would be and I'll do this more accurately, it would be like this. You would have a double bond on the left. And then I'm going to show you now the other structure. Let me reset this. So let's say that instead of removing the electrons from the left side, O and N, let's do the same thing from the right side. So we'll take, a look, take one from here and one from here. I'll erase those two. The two remaining form a double bond there. So now the double bond will be on the opposite side here, the right side. And if you do the Lewis dot structure of this, you will see that there are two structures here that represent um, the uh, nitrite uh, ion. Now, because this is a polyatomic, uh, we must put it in a bracket. Don't forget to do that. The charge goes on the X on the outside. Okay, so there's a negative one there. Do the same thing over here. Put the negative over here. I know I write on a room there. Um, let me take this out of here to avoid confusion. But always remember, put it in a bracket and put the charge on the top right-hand corner. Okay, let's take a look at another example. We have the carbonate uh, ion. So carbon has four valence. 
there's only one carbon there. Oxygen has six, there are three, so that takes us to 18. Now, notice there's a minus two charge. Whoops, didn't want to cover that. So we got a minus two charge over here, so you're going to add two electrons. So our magic number is going to be 24. So then when we draw this up, we're going to put carbon in the middle. We're going to put our three oxygens. We're going to connect everybody to the central atom and give everybody an octet. Again, always start with the peripheral elements, just like this. And then we need to add two dots for the carbon so that we have um, everybody has an octet. Now, when you count this up, you'll notice that there are 26 electrons here. We're going to have to remove two and bring it down to 24. We want to match this number. So this one, you're going to see there are three possibilities. Okay, first, let's say that we want to take one from here and one from here and form our double bond there. So the result would look like this. You would have the double bond on the left side. You still have a single down here, a single on this side. So let me put here the dots or lone pairs, just like that, okay? And this would be one possible structure. It's a polyatomic, so I forgot the dot there. So we need to put the charge on the corner here, okay? Now, let's take a look at this. Let's reset this. And let's say that I wanted to take one from here and here. Okay? So now the double bond would form between the, uh, the two carbons uh, over here. I, don't, I didn't do this very well, but you would have another double bond there. Okay? I'll, I'll draw it a little nicer now so that you could take a look at it. Okay, so I'll erase this, and there we go. Let me put that. So when you take out one from the left side here, uh, one of the carbons on the top and one of the oxygens on the bottom, your double bond is now at the bottom here. You still got a single bond on both of these sides, so let me go ahead and fill this in. Your oxygen here, it doesn't really matter if it's on the left side or the right side. Remember, these molecules are three-dimensional. And again, you have your charge here. Now, I'm going to put a double arrow because that's the symbol for resonance. And then we have a third scenario. Let's say you take one from here and here. The two in the middle pair up. Okay, so now you have the double bond on the right-hand side. You still got a single bond there and a single bond on the bottom. So I want to fill this in. It'll look like this. And uh, again, let me fill that in. You have your charge on the top right-hand corner and a double arrow here to designate the resonance structure. This one has three uh, different resonance structures. Here's the original again. And you can see you can either form the double bond on the left side uh, between the carbon in the middle and the bottom oxygen or the one on the right side. Three possible resonance structures. And don't forget, since it's a polyatomic, put it in a bracket and put the charge on the top right-hand corner. Now, there is one more I'm going to show you here. There's this molecule, very popular molecule called benzene. It's C6H6. And what benzene is, it's actually um, six carbons arranged in a hexagonal ring, as you can see here. And what happens is each carbon has a hydrogen like this. And what happens is benzene is actually an alternating single, double, single, double, single, double. Now, notice that I'm going to draw this by showing you resonance because how about if somebody said, well, what about if I put the double bond here and then make this one the single and w watch what I'm going to do here. If you redraw what I just did and I'm going to go ahead and draw the, the carbon skeleton here. If I put the double bond on the top, then this would be an, it's an alternating single double, 
single. So here we got a double, here's a single, here's a double, here's a single, here's a double, here's a single. Again, they each hold one H. If you look carefully at this structure, notice that th there's resonance here. You could see that if this keeps moving like this, um, you, you'll see how you go from one structure to the other. Uh, obviously, I didn't make room here, but you, you put a double arrow between them because this is resonance. And you have um, two structures here that represent benzene. Now, one of the things that you might see uh, is that these both of these structures are now represented by a unified one since the electrons are moving throughout the ring, and that's the definition of what we mean by delocalized electrons. Those electrons are moving uh, in the interior throughout this ring. So we have a structure that represents benzene, and what we do is, I'll go ahead and do this again, and I'll put the H's here. And we now uh, use a circle to represent this. Now, if you are familiar with organic chemistry, um, you'll see that benzene can also be represented like this. Um, hang on a second. Let me... Uh, you draw a hexagon like this. Each corner represents a carbon. Uh, the hydrogens are understood. So when I drew that first structure, where you have a double single here, double single here, double single here, that is the shortcut to represent benzene. And then watch the alternate resonance. You got a double here, single, double, single, double, single. And the unifying one that represents both of them, which this has come to be known as the universal symbol for benzene, is that they just put a circle inside and that kind of represents both of these structures because that alternating single double single double bond the circle represents that it's going throughout the ring because those electrons don't belong to any two particular carbons those are the delocalized electrons that are moving throughout the ring so this is a resonance example using benzene which is C6H6. And just so you know, benzene is uh, a carcinogen, okay? It, um, it's a cancer-causing agent. In fact, it causes leukemia, which is cancer of the white blood cells. So this is not something that you want to be uh, breathing. However, benzene is important because it is a startup molecule in the synthesis of many other uh, complex molecules. You might, when you read about benzene, you'll notice it's uh, an aromatic hydrocarbon and it has this a uh, six-membered ring, as you can see here, okay?